Yeah, I really try to um, make people feel like they can be themselves at work. And I, you know, I try to do things like, uh, you know, kind of embrace uh, geek culture to really fulfill your calling to be a change agent, to be a leader, to how to deal with that kind of that daily beat down that we all kind of face at times. Welcome to this week's Change Agent Podcast. My name is Nathan Lesnowski. I'm Concurrency's Chief Technology Officer. Welcome to the show. On the Change Agent Podcast, we talk with transformative technology leaders about the change that they're driving in their businesses, the way they act as humans to drive the engagement and excitement in their organizations, and the technology that's getting them all pumped up and getting them excited to do it. We've had super interesting conversations on the show. We've talked about development and how you build pods. We've talked about the engagement around financial services and how that industry is shifting. We've talked about manufacturing transformation, data and analytics. And this conversation is no different. We have an awesome guest. We have Zach Hughes. Zach is the master of the Zach on Leadership podcast. He's also a VP of IT at CHS. He's a fantastic leader. He talks about how you can be an excellent leader in your IT organization and broader, just general leadership, as well as simply being a great technology leader himself. We're going to talk a little bit about all those topics today and more. So welcome to the show, Zach. Thanks. Really, really happy to be here. It's uh, great to talk to you today. Awesome. So, so Zach, I think I think one of the first questions I had is I I got lost in the uh, the the article to next article to next article to next article on the Zach on Leadership blog slash podcast. You know, tell me about what you know what caused you to even start that process. You know, of, of writing on that because it's so interesting. It's such an awesome asset. Yeah, thank you. I um, it's been a it's been a fun journey. Yeah, I will tell you what what kind of led up to that was um, I, I guess uh, I went to I went to grad school a number of years ago and kind of you know in grad school you do a lot of reading and you do a lot of writing. Um, and you know I graduated back uh, from that to back in 2014 and kind of after that it's like you know. I need to continue with that reading habit. Um, I don't want to stop reading. Let's, let's, it's good. So I, I just kept reading like tons of books and then, but I found out, I was like, you know, I kind of miss writing. Um, and then also, you know, I found myself just always having leadership discussions with, with peers and with coworkers, uh, at other companies. And I just found we're always have, we're always talking about some of the same issues. We're all facing some of the same challenges and, and I would have these leadership insights and, uh, you know, but, but, you know, to have coffee with one person or lunch with one person, you know, I can reach, you know, you know, five, 10 people a week tops, right. Uh, you know, the power of a blog and a podcast is you can really reach a lot of folks. So, uh, that became the idea. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to uh, talk as a, as a, as a, sitting technology leader, um, about technology leadership issues, not necessarily about technology itself. And not, and there's a, a lot of people that just talk about leadership, of course, that are, you know, just consultants or authors and things like that. I'm going to talk about, you know, kind of in, in the trenches, leadership in technology. And I think, uh, that'll connect with people. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I started this over five years ago. It's been, been a fun journey. Oh, awesome. So Tell me about the place where you're applying this. You are a you're a VP of IT. You are yep. at CHS, and that's sort of the the land you're living. The Zach on Leadership podcast, right? You're like ex experimenting, living it, ex extending it. Like, tell me a little bit about your role in that organization. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I lead a couple of capabilities within within IT. Um, our our global infrastructure and operations. Uh, we have uh, we're a global company. We operate in 22 countries. We have like 700 locations across uh, the United States as well. Um, so it's it's a kind of a big footprint. So kind of core infrastructure and operations is is part of part of my my area. Uh, cloud transformation, a big big topic. Moving from data centers into a public cloud has been a big transition for me. I also lead our dev teams, our application development group. Uh, we we support a lot of different enterprise applications out of that. Um, and, and then finally, I've been uh, leading just over the last year our our customer experience uh, application portfolio, uh, which has been kind of a fun and new additional challenge for me. Oh, that's awesome. So when you think about applying the leadership lessons that you've learned by thinking about blogging about talking about 
leadership topics to what is probably the biggest transformation we've had in our lifetimes, which is the movement to the cloud and the democratization of technology, and especially even the dev activities that you're, you're handling, the bringing of capabilities above the line. You know, tell me about how you've, you know, what's the, what's the starting point? Like, what's the starting point of where, there's so much you can dig into there, but like, what's the starting point of how you think about it in a big picture wise, bringing leadership to the table? Sure, it's it's a great question, and, and and I think you know probably the first thing is I got to recognize that um, you know I, I personally you know went on a, a quite a journey here to get to kind of where I am, and you know everyone kind of needs to go on on their own journey, and, and you can't lead people where you you can't you haven't gone yourself, and you know I guess one thing I'll share about my background is I've spent a an awful lot of time I spent you know 20 years of my of my career you know working you know in data center technologies um, I, I actually was involved in several data center builds and uh, you know just uh, in data center migrations and just you know building out modern data centers was really just a key piece of my background and you know I'd say you know rewind back the clock 10 years ago you know uh, you know you know cloud is kind of hype it does it, you know, it's kind of niche. It doesn't really solve enterprise needs. You know, it, you know, some of that was true and some of that was me being my own, a laggard myself. Right. Um, and so I personally went on this cloud journey where, um, I started, you know, I got some ahas. I started to see, it's like, wow, this is really powerful and it's really going to change everything. Um, and I have a real opportunity to help our organization really pursue this. Uh, so, um, you know, that's, that's really the genesis of it is, is myself going through a kind of a personal, uh, journey from skeptic to cloud enthusiast. And that's my foundation for really helping others. So how do you help your team go through those same journeys? You know, so, and, and not that we're all ever not on a journey, right? We're all mm -hmm. to a certain degree kind of exploring what's next for us. You know, as a as a person who has that accountability to help people be the best versions of themselves, you know, how do you how do you lead them on that journey? Yeah, it's it's challenging, um, and you know, it takes. Uh, um, yeah, I, I guess uh, you know. One of the things I would do is is, uh, is somewhat you know use some skills out of a uh, of an organizational change management kind of kind of skill set and tool toolkit, uh, which I have educated myself on and I have, uh, you know, tried to put into practice as much as I can uh, as a technology leader. You know, it's it's hard to, you know, be effective in in change without, you know, adding some of these 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 skills uh, to uh, to your own skill set. So I've been I've been doing that. I've been practicing that. I've been working on it, trying to trying to do a better job at it. Um, you know, so some of the things that I, that, you know, that um, that may make a big difference is, you know, there's always a small percentage of of your team that uh, are going to be super enthusiastic right away about uh, what you're talking about. You know, the kind of the tip of the spear type of type of folks that, uh, hey, you know, I'm all about it. Let's let's do the DevOps thing. Let's do do the cloud native thing. You know, I, I, I'm running AWS at home, you know, for I'm playing with it. You know, just there's lots of, yep. you know, there's a handful of folks in your teams, every 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 organization that are really enthusiastic about it. So, you know, what we did, you know, we just engaged those folks right away, you know, so, okay, let's, let's, let's start, start this journey. Let's, let's, uh, let's go together on this. Um, so, you know, but that's, it's not a lot of people, um, you know, the, you, you kind of need to bring, bring some others along the ride. So we, uh, we did get some help. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm a believer in getting some, some help on consulting. Um, I, I don't, you know, kind of like, like to outsource the whole thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, people that have gone ahead of me. Um, that have done been there, done that. Where I want to go, I will bring some consulting along the side to kind of help us get get our foothold, get going in the right direction, not make a bunch of mistakes that we don't need to make. Um, and you know, through that, you're always thinking knowledge transfer. You're always thinking, how do I train up my folks? How do I get them, you know, kind of um, you know access to you know this knowledge, uh, start to see the benefits for themselves. Uh, you know, all the what's in it for me kind of uh, kind of questions that kind of need to be answered for folks. And and you start to uh, kind of walk that journey, and more and more people kind of get on board, more and more people get kind of get excited about it, and uh, and and you know then 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 there's you know uh, folks that are just a, a little bit more resistant to it um, for for any variety of reasons. They, you know, I've I've been working on this this piece of technology for you know 25, 30 years. It's all I know. This is this is kind of what I know and what I trust. And this whole other thing is is kind of scary, and you know I think. 
you know, recognizing uh, sometimes what we're talking about here is, 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 you know, it can be threatening to folks, you know, Hey, I've, I've invested, I've be, I've made myself an expert. I'm at the top of my field in this kind of technology that you're kind of saying is maybe no longer relevant. That that's, that's threatening to folks. It just is. So, you know, I think acknowledging that, you know, put it out there and say, Hey, I, I understand that this is potentially it. And, you know, and ultimately while I'm putting the needs of the company and the interests of the company really high, um, obviously I'm trying to, you know, drive change and, and get, get a business impact, uh, associated with this, you know, I'll put people first though. You know, if, if, you know, the best thing for someone's career is, uh, you know, to keep working on, you know, something that's really not cloud native or cloud compatible. Um, and they want to pursue that. And as an independent consultant or things like that, or work for a different company that has a little different position there, it's like, yeah, I, I want to help you do that. I want to help you succeed. I want, I want to help you be, be fulfilled and satisfied. So, um, I, um, you know, that, that, that can be the, the story for, for some people. So, um, trying to make it safe, you know, trying to make it, uh, you know, so you don't feel railroaded, um, and th- they have options is, is kind of a big piece of it. Yeah, you really hit on three really important stakeholder groups there. You know, the first being that group of people that are already excited. They want to drive it forward. They want to capture the excitement and do something with it. And then you have that sort of middle group of the who move my cheese. Like, I've got to grow something different. This is not what I was expecting or it's a change for me, but I, I can, you can get them through that. And then the one where that's fear, right? Or they're because of the, investment they've placed. And I love what you said there about naming it, just naming that this is a such situation for you that, that is challenging. It's, it could have fear attached to it. it. You've made a lot of investment and we have to help shepherd you through potentially a different, a major career change or uh, uh, something that's meaningful to you that maybe there's, there's something different that might be a good fit for you. Um, that's, mm-hmm. that's a huge kind of delineation between individual types. It, and I can really appreciate it. You know, I think, I mean, as, as a leader myself, uh, you know, am I willing to become dumb again, you know, yeah. in anything, any topic, right? It's, it, it's a really humbling position to put yourself in. Um, you know, especially, you know, for, you know, you and I, we've been at this for decades, you know, you built some expertise. It's, uh, it's hard to say, it's like, well, I'm going to venture into this new topic where there's a whole lot of smart people. I'm not one of them. But uh, I'm going to learn and I'm going to, you know, start to develop that. And, you know, hey, we kind of been down the road before. Right. Uh, I, I have learned certain things and got to a point of expertise. I can do it again. Um, it's um, yeah, but it, it but it's a challenge. It's a, it's a it is a roadblock for some folks. Is that where the realization there's this term called imposter syndrome that you're, you know, is, is that sort of where that comes to the table? where like we all have to kind of like if we model that. Mm-hmm we don't know everything because we don't, right? Like there's Mm -hmm. a whole lot of things I've had give up by doing what I do now, right? That used to be the expert at X, Y, or Z, right? No longer the expert at that. So I can do this. And this other person is the expert at this. And he may have to give that up to take where he wants to go next. And maybe it's modeling that it's okay not to know, like and modeling that we're all on a journey. Yeah, it's a good point. You know, it's, uh, yeah, imposter syndrome is 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 something that uh, any leader that's honest with themselves is gonna gonna be facing, right? You know, am, am I qualified to to be your your you know, your am I worthy of being your guest on this podcast, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> am I um you know do I when I write my blogs is this worth people's time to read? You know, do I actually have any real insightful wisdom here, or am I just you know uh you know is is this useless you know thought musings? You know, I, I think we all kind of deal with that, and uh, you know it's. Because I think we hold up, you know, uh, the technology superheroes and, 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 and the high tech companies, you know, um, you know, like pick Amazon, Netflix, you know, the, you know, Facebook or Google, any of these companies that we kind of admire to say, well, they are, they're leading, they're doing the real thing. And I have some sort of, um, you know, um, illegitimate version of that, or, or I'm, I'm like, you know, five years behind or 10 years behind or, or whatever it is, you know, we, we all kind of face that, you know, there's always going to be somebody that's, uh, you know, more advanced than, than you. And, you know, CHS, we're, 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 we're an agricultural cooperative. Um, you know, we are, uh, you know, we aren't necessarily, you know, doing a whole lot of technology that's never been done before, but we are, 
you know, bringing that technology to bear in the uh, agriculture industry, which is, uh, you know, is transforming right now. So it's, um, it's satisfying, but, uh, yeah, I think the, the imposter syndrome is totally, totally a relevant point. You know, you, you kind of, it's like, oh, well, um, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of slackers. We're behind, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, as I've had conversations with other, other tech leaders, you know, you know, there's a lot of people that are just really even haven't started their cloud journeys at all. So the fact that we are even, you know, a couple of years into this process means, you know, that we're uh, we're not not necessarily laggards. We can recognize the fact that we are, you know, um, you know, lead, leading leading the way here at times. So it's it's a good reminder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, when you think about the transition that that your organization has had to make, you know, on the now having gone through some of that, you know, with the the different groups that had to say, okay, I'm going to accelerate or your cheese was here. Now it's here. It's, it's still there. It's just done in a different way. And then the reinvention of, of the job, you know, when you thought about doing that, were you rewriting job descriptions? Were you creating new roles? Were you transitioning existing ones? Like what was the, uh, that's probably a bigger picture than I'm asking, but like, what was the magic of that? Like, what was the, how did you get your hands dirty in that transition and help them to come out of the other end and feel like, yeah, like he really treated me in the right way and I am a better person for it and I'm doing cooler things and I'm my career is on track. Yeah, it's a great question. And goodness, it probably goes back pre-cloud to kind of lay some of the groundwork mm. uh, for that. And, you know, I would look back to, you know, just, just the whole concept of DevOps, which is, you know, uh, maybe eight years old in terms of it's, uh, you know, uh, being a a common term for us uh, to be talking about. You know, there's always this proverbial wall between, you know, development and operations. They had opposing uh, goals. Uh, They, you know, there's a lot of throwing of things over the wall, a lot of blame casting, all this sort of thing, right? We all lived it. um, It's, um, you know, and unfortunately, some companies are really still living it. Uh, So, you know, kind of wind back the clock, um, probably about four four years ago for for CHS, you know, we combined – our, our development and our infrastructure engineering teams, uh, kind of under, under a common management structure, um, which, um, you know, re- really helped kind of lay, lay, lay some of the bedwork for this. And we started adopting things like, you know, infrastructure as code and even just like check your scripts into the, you know, uh, in, into the common repository version control and things like that. Just starting to teach some of these basics to, um, infrastructure engineers that are used to kind of you know, working a GUI or a command line and and never really doing any of these software development practices, right? So uh, starting to drip that and create those opportunities, create those expectations to say, hey, if you're going to write a piece of automation, my expectation is that you're going to version control that, you got to put in source control, and it's going to be uh, that's going to be part of part of uh, what we do around here now going forward. Uh, so, you know, I feel like and that was all on prem, that was all in data centers, right? Uh, so I feel like that work uh, kind of laid the groundwork to say, okay, now we're going to start pursuing, you know, cloud native. We're going to start learning how to do this sort of thing. You know, there's already this kind of sense of movement um, already happening. And this kind of started as like, you know what, this is kind of the next logical step in, in that evolution process. So uh, a question has been on my mind as we've been talking, um, you know, as we think about, the transition to the, to the cloud, to cloud operating models, to DevOps, anything you feel strongly about, right? Like, mm-hmm. let's say DevOps is it, right? You're, we're talking about the movement away from the legacy way of interacting with, uh, with b- between development and operations uh, to a DevOps style that even takes into account new concepts like infrastructure as code and application release management and all these things. There's a concept... There's maybe even an unfair, maybe this is even a good dichotomy to draw, but there's a dichotomy that sometimes fits in my mind between servant leadership and take the hill, right? There's this sort of servant leadership, but like, I'm here to unblock you, right? Like you've got, you're going to be the best version of yourself and I'm here to just make sure that you're able to achieve that best version of yourself. And if there's something that needs to be done in order to achieve that, I'm going to help unblock that and be that servant leader to you and and enable you to be able to be who you can be. But then there's this, I feel, and maybe this is not a necessary economy, but I feel like there's this other side of like, there's the hill. This is what we're going to go do. Get excited about it. Let's go, let's go get it. Like let's, that's, mm-hmm. let's go climb that thing and you can do it. Go get that thing on your back and let's go. And yeah, I know that's tough. Keep going. Like it's, 
but that, I almost feel like there's sometimes you have to kind of fit onto one side of that spectrum, but maybe it's not even a spectrum at all. Like what's, what's, what's your perspective of, of that sort of dichotomy or false yeah. dichotomy? Um, I would say it's, it could be a dichotomy, it does, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, so this is how I would look at it. Um, um, you know, in terms of take the hill type, type type of commentary, you know, that the, uh, that's appropriate when it's very vision oriented, you know, or strategy oriented at, at a high level to say, you know, directionally speaking, we are going here. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to buy, you know, new data center equipment and land it in our data centers. We have to, you know, kind of move off at this time by the time they're at, at the end of their useful life. You know, that's a directional thing. Right. Uh, so I'm comfortable making those sort of kind of high level, you know, kind of vision declarations. Um, but uh, I think it's super important to kind of leave that kind of directiveness at that level mm -hmm. um, where that's where servant leadership comes in in terms of the how. Uh, so um, how are we going to do that? It's like, actually, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> right. You guys do. Um, so let's get to it. So it's about engaging those teams on the ground, engaging those 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 managers that are closer to, you know, that are living this day in and day out and say, well, this is the vision. You know, how do you think we can we can get there? How, how do we um, together uh, figure this out, set realistic milestones, uh, figure figure out if this is all feasible, you kind of work the problem, so to speak. Right. So I'm there cheering them on. Um, I'm laying kind of the end goal in mind, but uh, then I have to I have to remain flexible, right? In terms of um, what that specifically looks like, right? I um, I can't be overly rigid, just you know, barking out orders to say, no, we're going to do it this way. I mandate that from the top. No, I mean these are engineers you're dealing with, right? They're smart. They 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 get the technology. They get the challenges way better than I do. So there's no it's inappropriate for me to play engineer and be overly prescriptive. Let's get the smart people together. Let's figure it out. Hopefully, they uh, kind of come to some general conclusions together, and and, and we march forward. And that's uh, you know that and that's a challenge too. Just uh, but it, but that's where servant leadership comes in. Um, so I look at it as complementary. I don't think it has to be you know kind of one way or the other. You know, and to say you know the servant leadership doesn't really work too well with without any any strong vision at all you can't just say well let's just meander um <laughs> you know i think vision vision is key is key so yeah that's a that's a great way to break it down um as it, it was thinking maybe like even the idea of what micromanagement is is when that vision starts to come into the how like mm -hmm. okay right. like get out of the how like let your team figure out that be uh, be strong on the vision this is where we're going sometimes being in the how, even if you knew it, like sometimes I think that's a struggle for pe for tech people that have moved into leadership is they have that sort of historical skill set they had. So they, oh, yeah. and I do that myself. Like I, I'll apply that down. I'm like, well, hell, I know, I know, still know this. Like let's apply that. And, <laughs> and then you kind of like go, you overextend it, you know, like, mm -hmm. so it, I think what you're saying there is like totally valid. Like that's where you're maybe overextending into the, the actually just let them do it. Even if you know, like just mm -hmm. let them do it. Totally. Uh, and and I would say in the world of traditional data center technology, I, I could go fairly deep. Um, you know, cl cloud is a different animal. Um, if you do it right, it's a different animal. I mean, you can do cloud in a way that's very data center like, I guess. But, uh, you know, I think if you're going to do cloud well, you're going to really embrace a lot of the new paradigms, right? Uh, which, you know, everybody on my team knows more about it than I do. So I'm going to let them, you know, do, do uh, what they can. And really my goal is, is to, is to not let my experience, not let my past experience, um, you know, be, uh, you know, be a completely, you know, create some sort of like a, you know, you know, bias where I am unintentionally or really without even knowing it, slowing my team down. Uh, so I'll give you an example of one, one way I tried to really do that for myself is, um, I went through the uh, the AWS uh, Cloud Practic Practitioner uh, Certification uh, Program. I, I learned it and I took the test. It really wasn't super hard. It's pretty approachable, but you know, and, and I have no career aspirations to be a cloud practitioner hands on. I'm not going to log on to the console and start spinning up EC2 instances. It's not my role. Uh, but I put myself through that so I could really make sure that I understand what's capable here and make sure that I don't unintentionally sabotage this thing so yeah that makes total sense like a willingness to learn something that may 
positively influence your ability to understand the picture, but not necessarily something you apply every day, which right. isn't that part of life, right? You're always trying to learn something that's going to expand your horizons and, and either in any direction, right? Um, you know, on that same, like, on that same vein, um, how are you, st- I want to say stay current is probably the wrong word choice. It's more like, I think one of the things I've been most excited about, about being in our particular domain of work has been what I was doing 20 years ago in tech from 10 years ago in tech to five years now, now, and now even just thinking, how do I even stay relevant in 10 years and knowing that I have, but the understanding that that's a journey, like what are you doing? What's your, what are your favorite ways to kind of keep yourself thinking about where the entire domain is going and how you partner that awareness with where you're leading your company? That's a really good question. Um, I'll try to think of a succinct way of answering that. You know, I, I'm still super interested in digital trends. Um, you know, so I, I do just my own leisure reading. I, I kind of like to think I stay up on things. Um, and, you know, it, it's, um, it's just an interest area of mine. And uh, it's another interest area of mine is, is cybersecurity. I just kind of, I don't know if there's some, you know, kind of big, you know, threat going on or hack going on. I'm, I'm just, I'm just there. I'm kind of zoned into it because that's just kind of an area of interest. So uh, I, I, I let my own curiosity kind of pull me forward, um, you know, to, to a degree. Um, and I would say I try to get myself, make sure I give myself opportunities to hear from, hear from my team in terms of the cool things they're doing. So uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, we just did a, um, a, uh, town hall for my department. Um, and you know, usually town hall meetings are like for you know, people like me or my direct reports to like roll out new programs and do a bunch of report out stuff and say, here's the update on this initiative. Here's the update on this initiative. Here's some new thing you, you need to know about that. And we've done those in the past. Every, every major company kind of does those sorts of things. It's like, well, we're going to have a different kind of a town hall. It's going to be, you know, uh, I'm going to open it up for 30 seconds and then we're going to just have a bunch of tech presenters doing demos of cool stuff that's going on in their area that they know about. Maybe their immediate coworkers know about, but you know, the rest of my department has, has no clue about because we haven't given an opportunity to kind of do that. So we started showcasing these, these, these really cool developments and just kind of cross pollinating things and showcasing them. And I, I love it for my own self because I get to see, you know, the demo is like at, in my position, that's not necessarily a common thing. I'm meeting with business stakeholders. I'm meeting with other executives. You know, I'm not sitting in on tech demos, unfortunately. I, I think I think they're great, but I just don't see it. So I, I'm not I don't have that awareness. So just even putting myself in a position where I'm going to see some of these, these these things demonstrated and it's like, oh, wow, that's awesome. That's going on in my area. I didn't even realize it. So um, that that's that's one area one way. You know, uh, around some of those topics, like, um, where does, where does understanding the, the framework or the thought process or the, like how people approach things in your team come into play? You know, you, uh, a recent thing that we did at concurrency was did this insight study, you know, where you kind of understand mm-hmm. different people's personality types and how they kind of think about things and challenge things. And, um, you know, something I've, I've come to be aware of is that I'm this sort of red personality types, sort of like a take the hill kind of person. Right. But then there's this other kind of personality types, like a very detail oriented blue type personality is like, they will not take the hill until they know all the details and they want it all laid out for them. Right. So there's this sort of natural dichotomy between these like two, right? Like go do it and we'll figure it out on the way. And then there's the, like, I'll figure it out and then we'll go do it. How does, how does that understanding of your people sort of, fit into the fit into how you lead you know so i would say the probably the uh, it's, it's a good specific question about you know different personality types i would i'll give i guess maybe more a little bit of a general answer um, um i would say yeah i really try to um, make people feel like they can be themselves at work. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I try to do things like, uh, you know, kind of embrace uh, geek culture, you know, like have a whole department of, of IT folks working in a corporation that is not a tech company. I mean, you, you get to work in a tech company. That That's cool. Um, I, I work in an agriculture company that, you know, is, is you know, owned by farmers, you know, it, it has a, you know, the culturally speaking, it's, it, it's, it's, it's more corporate and it's, uh, it's also more, you know, kind of rural agriculture, kind of a feel to it, you know, just, uh, so 
how do I make a you know an IT engineer or a developer or a architect you know, feel like you know they could be themselves at work right and and, and that they're valued um, for for being who they are I want them to be here I'm not trying to change them to be a corporate type or change them to be a farmer I'm trying to you know I want them to you know, live out their career and be who they are um, on the job every day uh, the best version of themselves so um, I kind of try to go out of my way to make it make it safe uh, to you know talk about science fiction to you know whether it's you know comic books or a- anything else that people are kind of into in, in geek culture you know that that's part of it and then you know and, and also embracing that kind of analytic side analytical side uh, say this is a strength it's not a weakness I'm, I, I want you to be the best version of yourself I'm not trying to you know beat you over the head with your weaknesses um, I want to raise up your strengths and see the best version of those um, you know I'll just say as well that um, no one person is the whole package. Yep. I'm not, you're not, you know, it's only as a team that we can, you know, kind of be complete, uh, so to speak in terms of like having all the perspectives we need, uh, to be successful. So, um, you know, I, I just, uh, I want people to be the best version of themselves. And, and if we are lacking a perspective, lacking a skill, lacking a point of view, let's, you know, let's, let's augment the team to kind of get that. So awesome. Awesome. All right. Last question. Uh, last question. So you have just brought so much to the table, not only from the podcast and the blogs and just how much that gives the community, but then also just being a leader in your workplace and what you do just day to day in that. What has inspired you? Who's inspired you to be the kind of person that you are and to enact the kind of change that you're enacting? Um, I'll give you two answers there. Um, so I'll, I will say you know, why I'm the leader I am, um, is cause I learned, uh, I was very fortunate. Uh, I learned early on, uh, what good leadership looks like. Um, and, and I'll just, uh, you know, I was actually surrounded by a lot of great leaders and led by a lot of great leaders, but, uh, just to kind of pick out one, uh, Tom Bethke, uh, it was a kind of a lifelong mentor of, of mine, uh, an early boss, um, you know, just made it safe to fail. Um, you created that camaraderie, created that challenging environment to kind of excel rapidly. And, you know, I kind of grew so rapidly in my early career. And, and then, and that, then I left that environment and looked at Alice and says like, you know what? Not everybody had that. Actually, that was really rare that I had that, that, that experience. And then if I had not had that experience, I likely would not be where I am today. So I really want to give credit to, you know, kind of that early career experience where it was like, Hey, leadership was done well. It was done right, and I benefited tremendously of uh, that because I didn't have to unlearn a bunch of bad habits later on in my career. Right? I, I kind of saw, uh, you know, servant leadership practiced, you know, kind of day one, you know, going back 22 years ago. Um, the other, you kind of, kind of uh, to pick a different kind of example in terms of somebody that's inspired me. I'll, I'll pick uh, author uh, Seth Godin. Um, speaks uh, uh, and and writes tons of books. Uh, he's kind of known for marketing, mm-hmm. not so much technology. Uh, but um, I find his writing so encouraging and compelling. Um, the way he talks about uh, just just working with purpose, um, you know, just how to be uh, almost like a creative artist in a um, you know, kind of a industrial complex world, uh, that we live in not to be that, you know, kind of to fight the resistance to be this, you know, kind of, you know, cog in a machine, right. To really fulfill your calling, to be a change engine, to be a leader, to how to deal with that kind of that daily beat down that we all kind of face at times. Right. Um, so, I find Seth just super encouraging and I actually reread his books. It's like one of the few authors where I'd actually, I've read a book and actually will go back and read it again because I kind of need to hear it again. Uh, so that's a rare thing for me. So, uh, Seth kind of rises to that level and, uh, he's, he's kind of, uh, one of those, uh, big sources of inspiration for me. Oh, awesome. Zach, this is, this has just been great. I, I, I feel like I could talk with you for the next couple hours on this topic, but we do, uh, we do have to wrap her up. So I, I'm super appreciative of everything that you had to share. I love the keep it up with the podcast. I love it. I love the blogs. And uh, thank you so much. For yeah, it's great to be here. Thank today. you so much. Awesome. And we thank you to our listeners. We're so glad that you're with us. And we will see you next time on the Change Agent Podcast. 